Hey guys, this is Bruce and welcome to Convo Courses. Today is open topics. I would like to talk a little bit about artificial intelligence. Uh, lately, I've been I've been getting into it. It's it's incredible. It's in incredibly terrifying. And I would definitely love to talk about that. But I have a lot of people asking me questions. I have it's kind of the only time I have time to answer a question because I'm, you know, I'm, I have a job. So is on the weekends. So um that's when i take the time to do open topics and just answer questions and um i'm gonna start by answering questions directly from uh from youtube people have been asking me questions there and then i apparently have questions on facebook so i'll answer questions there as well so let's start off with youtube shall we um oh wow and it's okay there we go there we go. Share screen. There we go. All right. So I'm getting a bunch of comments on YouTube. And so I'm showing my screen right now, showing the YouTube. So uh, Robin asked me or says, uh, this is an excellent video. I've been working as cybersecurity analyst for three years and want to and want to progress into an information system security officer role. Um, I found this video helpful. Thank you. Okay. What video is that? Every ISO needs to know this. Okay. I don't even know. What I, I don't remember what I even talked about, <laughs> but I appreciate that comment. It's great. That's great. Glad it was helpful. Appreciate that. Okay. Thanks, Robin. Thanks for that. Um, let me see here. Okay. There's one question there. I'm going to go to Facebook. Um, somebody asked me, do you offer in-person appointments? And, um, I'm reaching out to you because, um, I want to know which way, um, which way should me and my cousin go for GRC governance, risk and compliance. That's more, more of a field that we want to go into. Um, and we completed a risk management framework course last summer, but we feel we didn't learn enough. Could you lead us in the right direction? So I've got a lot to say about this. Um, I'm a subject matter expert on risk management framework. It's it's my specialty. So that's if there's if there's one thing I could talk about with no script is that I've just been doing it a very long time. So I have a lot to say about it, and it makes a lot of money. It's a great career, and I through this is like the second recession I've gone through, and I'm not affected. I mean, of course, I'm affected. I mean, eggs are like three dollars, fifteen dollars now a piece or something. You know, I'm affected in that way. But I, what I mean is, I can get a job. So, you know, and and in this, when it was 2008, I had the job, and when it's because risk management framework and security compliance. And if you don't know what those words mean, it's it's a branch of cybersecurity. It's not very, it's not super technical where you're hands on and fixing firewalls and stuff, but it's a it's an area that's very much needed. And essentially, it's just rules. It's just making sure an organization is is meeting certain rules. And those rules can be from the government, from the state, from their industry. Like retail has their own industry. Banking has its own industry. There's different industries and they have a different set of rules that are necessary to make sure that um, people they're doing what they're supposed to do legally and doing what they're supposed to do from a cybersecurity standpoint. Because any one of those things can get the organization in big trouble if they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So that's that's kind of where I step in and I come in and say, okay, here's here's what let me see you guys' documents. Let me see what you guys have going on. Let me see your infrastructure. Let me see this and that. And then I can help them to figure out how to um, maintain a certain level of security posture. That means a certain level of security. Because security is always, it's always go, you know, it's moving all the time. It's always can be up, it can be down. There can be patches that need to happen. There's vulnerabilities. There's all kinds of stuff always happening. So you you have to have an organization has a process in place to fix those things. So you maintain a certain balance. You don't want to like dip too low, but you you also don't want to go too much because if you go too like put too much security in there, it can make it can um, be very costly because it could hurt your business. You know, business essential functions. Or your mission essential functions where you put so much security in now you know your stuff is broken so this is something i can really do i've been thinking about doing one-on-ones but i have to figure out like i 
what I'll probably do, like if you guys follow me, what I'll probably do is take like a few people, maybe maybe one or two people a week or something, and just do like one on ones with them. But I have to do like a calendar set up and all that kind of stuff. So just keep following me. I might have something I can do, like maybe on Sundays or after work or something like that. So we'll we'll see what we can do. Um, I'm very open to like companies. I could talk to some companies. Now let me go to TikTok, where I have so many damn questions. I literally have hundreds of questions, hundreds of comments on here. I'm, I'm very shocked by by what's going on on TikTok. Um, I mean it's 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 amazing. Like the way they set it up is amazing in that it allows us connect more, but. Uh, I think they could do better as far as uh, some of the features. It could be it could be a little bit better. All right. Let me answer some questions directly from the live here. Um, let me see. What's up from Alabama? How you doing? Somebody asked me, Ali says, do you need a master's degree to make a good living? Or can you go off after a four year, a four year degree being like a bachelor's degree in science or bachelor's degree in arts or whatever? Uh, you don't really need either one of them, to be honest with you. And the wh- reason why I say that is because there's a hierarchy. And um, it's debatable. I'm sure there's some people on here, some some uh, highly skilled cybersecurity, information security people on here who would disagree. But I'll tell you like this. Um, it's a hierarchy. The top of the chain is is um, is experience. So nothing beats experience. That's the first thing. If you had a bunch of experience on a certain feature or a certain thing within cybersecurity or an information technology, it would be highly desirable in some cases. I have, and I just say this out of experience. I know people who have been hired with no degree and they were making pretty good money, but they had a really good amount of experience in a certain thing that that organization or that company or the government needed. And so they hired them and they, they weren't even looking at the degree. And if you if you talk to people like I mean, I've heard um, Tesla, Elon Musk, talk about um, how he doesn't even look at the degree. He just wants to know if people are can do the job. And there's certain companies that are like that. So I would say the first thing is going to be experience. That being said, the average person is not going to have that one specific skill set that is needed to uh, make those those that that big money. That big we're talking about that big money, right? So you know that 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 six figures. That being said, the degree is an extremely good way to get your foot in the door on your on the path to making six figures. Because not even a degree is going to guarantee you you're going to make that big money. Right. But it's like it's kind of like. It's it's I see it like this. There's a certain check boxes that you can get that are going to get you closer and closer to six figures. Like that's how I imagine it. You know, number one, do you have the experience? Any any level of experience? Do you have any experience? And then do you have experience specifically for what this organization needs? That's number one. The next check box would be do you have a degree? Because a degree it it does several things, especially if you're in a management position. It tells them like this person has uh, is consistent and has discipline, and uh, and has a, a broad a broad level of knowledge where they could do several different things. Um, so a degree is, is is another checkbox on that six figure box, and then another thing is certifications. That's the third you know the third tear down there. So certifications, certifications is like that extra box that you check and you, so you don't need a master's degree. So just Ali, you don't need a master's degree. Um, And you don't even need a cybersecurity degree. Like it doesn't have to be a cybersecurity bachelor's degree. Um, I would say, I would say that when you get the master's degree level, you're talking about management type positions, architect type positions, uh, C levels, directors, those people typically the the competition gets to where you have to have a master's degree, you know, because you're you're dealing with other people who not only have a lot of experience and whatever, but then they have also a de- this or that degree, and then a master's degree makes you way more competitive for architects, for directors, for C level execs. 
and for uh, managers, mid-tier managers, upper level managers, seniors, stuff like that. So that's where you want to probably get a degree. But below that, like if you're just a worker, if you're just like a even a high level dude, like a math, a bachelor's degree will, will, is fine. If even if you don't have one, you, you got to you've got to come to the table with something. Right. Especially if you're getting six figures. I've seen people make six figures with no degree and a CISSP with no degree. I've seen people with no degree, no certifications or anything. But those guys were super smart and had exactly what skill set. I mean, basically, they were the company. <laughs> They were, I've been to places where there, there was a couple dudes who who were who carried the organization because they knew so much and they were so good at what they did that they they were willing to pay them six figures or more because they needed these people. And, and you know, if you're not that person, you should probably look into getting yourself a, a, a certification or a degree to get that higher level money. So um, then you said, um, I'm a death set. I'm dead. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let me ask this, answer this other question. Is IT part of cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is part of IT. It's the other way around. <laughs> so information. What we're doing with, with cybersecurity is we're protecting the confidentiality, integrity and availability of the information. So here's the thing. If if you don't have the information because it's not on the systems that are built by information technology, then you what are you going to protect? Like the the information technology is the infrastructure that we need to protect. That's the thing that's processing the data, storing the data, transferring the data, transmitting the data. So information technology is a huge field. It's cloud, it's networking, it's uh it's um, servers, it's the workstations, the endpoint devices. You know, it's the entire infrastructure, it's databases, it's everything. But inside of that, you've got people who are very deep in certain things. You've got people who are deep in security, who do different aspects of security, because cybersecurity itself is very broad. It gets in a lot of different areas. But information technology has networking, has cloud technology, has cybersecurity, has so many areas. Like, it's so huge. So cyber, to answer your question, cybersecurity is a part of information technology. So hope that answers your question. Let me answer some, whoa, this thing's going crazy. TikTok questions. Um, somebody asked me, can you do cybersecurity at age 15? So cybersecurity is the protection of information systems. So that means your computer, your laptop, your phone, you know, anybody and everybody should be doing cybersecurity. And as a matter of fact, I would argue that all of us do do cybersecurity on some level. It's, it's computer security. That's all it is. So just to answer the question, yes, everyone is doing it and you don't even know it. Like it, whenever you've saw your system say, hey, do you, I need to update this system right now. I need to update this. When you click go, it's updating the system. That's that's a part of computer security. When whenever your system pops up with an antivirus symbol and you go in there and you check out, see what's going on, that's a part of cybersecurity. If you have ever turned on the audit logs on your system, if you've ever added an account on your computer, if you've added two different accounts because you're thinking, okay, I need an admin account and I need a standard account, that's cybersecurity. If you've protect physically protected your system, um, that's a part of information security. Information security includes a lot of different aspects, also known as information assurance. So there's people split hairs on the names of these things. So the difference between information assurance, information security, and cybersecurity. Um, for, for me, I use them interchangeably because I've done all of these things. I've been an information assurance officer. I've been an information system security officer, and I've been a cybersecurity analyst and a cybersecurity consultant. And I could tell you there's so much overlap between these three things that, you know, most of it is, is it's really the same. It's really the same stuff. We're protecting the infrastructure of the organization. But I would say, Normally in the industry, when, when they talk about cybersecurity, normally they're talking about dealing with cyber crimes, uh, security incidents, bre data breaches, 
something where you're hands on with the computers. That's normally what they're talking about when they say cybersecurity. But I've used I've seen it used interchangeably with information security, which is mostly compliance, risk scans. Uh, looking at the at documentation, stuff like that's stuff I do. And then information assurance and information, um, information security and information assurance. There's really no difference between those things. Assurance just means the confidence that a company has that they can operate effectively. Like that's that's all it means. It just means what assurance that we have do we have that we're going to protect this information. So to answer the question, anybody at any age can do. Uh, cybersecurity. We're all doing it, as a matter of fact, on a regular basis. We don't even we're doing it subconsciously. You know, now, if you're asking, can you get into a job at age 15? Probably, you know, um, I, maybe an internship or something. I've seen uh, kids in high school do internships for information technology that included cybersecurity. All right. Somebody ask. um I go there now. Cybersecurity information insurance is if you have a question. Okay, let me see. Kind of talked about information insurance. Bruce, what are you trying to do? I might be able to help. Sorry, man, I missed your message. <laughs> I definitely needed some help. Um, what I was trying to do is I got two phones. I got two phones. One I was going to point at the screen so that when TikTok, when I'm showing stuff on TikTok, I can I'll have my I'll invite myself on my other account and then show the screen on my other account that I was trying to show two screens on TikTok. But I don't know what you have to do to, to do. Uh, there's some things you have to do, but it's way too like deep. I'm not trying to spend an hour uh, configuring uh, OBS or something like that. Thoughts on cloud security. More specifically, I want to be an Azure security, cybersecurity engineer. Um, only I don't I'm not a cloud guy. I can just tell you what I know, you know, from being in this industry. It is that uh, Azure is definitely, definitely a good one to do. So uh, I would say the top three. The top three in the industry that are being used across the governments, across companies, banking industry, all of them are using it is AWS cloud is number one. They have like, I don't know, 40 percent of the total market share or something like that. And then uh, the next one would probably be Google. Well, probably Azure. I don't know if it's Azure or Google. It's one of those. I would say probably Azure first. It's Microsoft Azure. And then the, the third one would probably be Google. And then there's other ones, Oracle is in there and then there's a couple other ones in there that are way below that so let me let me see if i can show you like a diagram of the who has the market share and the reason why this is important is because whenever you're getting into this field your demand is based on what the market needs and that's why you what you're seeing right now with uh fang with your facebook amazon apple net netflix and, and google and all those guys there that are laying people off and not hiring people and stuff is because, you know, their market is is tied directly into the S&P 500 and investors and stuff. So when, when that takes a hit with like it is right now, they have to, you know, the first people to go is the employees. But there's certain people within that department, those departments that have to stay like the critical people have to stay, you know. So. If you're looking at cloud technology. You want to look at or anything really, software engineering, uh, different different platforms for security, firewalls. There's a different market share for each one of these technologies, right? So what I mean is, market share means like how many people are buying that product, how many people, how many organizations are buying that, how many people rely on that. Like Microsoft has a huge market share in the United States anyway, of of the of the operating system market. Because most people have Windows, people have Macs, people have Linux, people have Ubuntu or whatever. But, you know, not everybody, most people have Windows, a Windows system. Let me see if I can find the top. I'm trying to find like a diagram. There's like a really good diagram that shows the market share of each one of these. 
market sh market share. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about, and that will make. So whenever you you're thinking about going to a technology or you're trying to get a certification, especially vendor level certifications, because these are heavily dependent on the market. Let me show you guys what I have, what I'm seeing here. This is what I was talking about, by the way. This right here, this this right here. So let me switch my screen real quick. If you're thinking about doing cloud technology, which is be great, you know, cloud is cloud's on fire right now. So it would be really good for you to get into. But if you're thinking about it, yeah, just consider this. As you can see, um, the top one is is AWS, and then it's Azure. So what do I think about it? That's great. You know, that's you chose the right one because it has 20% of the market share, whereas Amazon has 34%. You know, Google's in there, Alibaba, which is in China. I am uh, IBM Cloudforce is in there and uh, Oracle's at the bottom there. And, you know, this changes from time to time. But if you're thinking about a certification in cloud and yeah, this is this is kind of follow this thing. If you get any of these three right here, you're good. Like you're, you're going to be able to find more jobs and people who need need uh, specialists on one of these things. So just consider that. And that's the same thing with firewalls or um, there, there's the same thing with firewalls or operating systems or um, flavors of Linux or all of these things have a market share. And if you target that, like one, one of the ones to give you an example of where this affected me directly was I used to be a SIEM guy. A SIEM is a uh, security uh, information event manager. And it basically collects all the logs and then it sources the logs. I used to be like, I could set the system up. I could configure it. I could, And I was on this system called ArcSight. And there was ArcSight and there was Splunk. And then there was like two or three other ones. And um, at the time, ArcSight was, was the top of the food chain. And um, it was the top of the food chain. And I was getting all these offers for crazy money, like $100 an hour or more or something like that. And then, like, for, fast forward two, three years, and ArcSight is not dead, but not many. It's not mark, as marketable as it used to be. Now it's Splunk. So, yeah, so market the market really matters. Okay. Um, oh, I want to let you guys know, if you guys are interested in learning more about this, I've got free courses. I've got free downloadables. i got super crazy discounts. Um, I've got a site that I just set up that'll help you to guide you in the right direction. And it's called convocourses.net. And I just noticed like when people were going to my site that they didn't know, like they, they were looking for a free course or free this or free that or discounts or whatever. And they don't even know that I have all these books. They don't know that I have all these courses. They don't. So this site is designed specifically to allow you to find all that stuff faster and just to for the purposes of the launch of the site, and all it is is the front page that leads you to ComboCourses.com, where I have all my stuff at. But here's the site right here. And it kind of tells you, hey, you know, if you want free templates or if you want resumes, you want courses, whatever you want, it's here it is on the site and um, kind of directs you in the right way. And the if you go in here, it's got some real good discounts in here that are these discounts are crazy like these are hurting my soul to even look at them to be honest with you <laughs> i don't want it's but you know i figure this is a great opportunity to um to uh give some discounts and show you guys what i've got going on if you're interested in it it's a great opportunity so you know i'm i'm not gonna have these discounts for long but uh take advantage of them while it while you have them I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got more stuff coming out, like more free stuff, more downloadables, more courses, more books, more all that stuff. But all that stuff takes time for me to develop. You know, I, it takes time to write it. It takes time to put it together, to edit the stuff, all that, you know, to curate it and all that. So it's going to take me a while. But ComboCourses.net, if you're interested, tons of deals. I'm giving away stuff for free. It hurts my soul to even look at the discounts because they're so cheap and I spent so much time on some of the stuff. But there you go. Um, check out the stuff. Maybe I figure if you like it, maybe you'll come back and say, man, Bruce, like I want to learn this stuff. Bruce knows this stuff. I'm going to go check him out. You know, so and another thing is that you'll get on my newsletter. My newsletter, I'll send out 
jobs. I get all these job offers. Like I know there's a recession and all stuff. I still get job offers. I still get job opportunities. I should say not offers. Offers the actual letter when you sign and all that stuff. I get a lot of opportunities and I can't do nothing with them. So I'll just send them to my newsletter and say, hey, guys, there's here's these jobs. These are remote jobs. These are, you know, it's an entry level job. This is a senior level job. So I'll just send those out to you guys. Or if I have discounts, sometimes I'll write a new book. And before in order to get some like reviews, I'll give it out for free. You know, or sometimes Amazon will give me free links to like audiobooks and I'll send out audiobooks for free. All this goes to my newsletter. So if you are interested in this kind of stuff, go to convocourses.net, link in description, link in bio, check it out. And um, I got lots more stuff coming. It's just going to take me a couple months or weeks or something to finish all this stuff, but I'll be releasing stuff little by little as we go. Okay, let me get back into this. Thoughts on cloud security? We already talked about that. What is the salary? level of a cybersecurity, an entry-level cybersecurity person? What is the entry-level salary for a cybersecurity person? I get this question quite a bit, and uh, it really depends on a few things. It depends on the state you're in. It depends on the position and the company that you're going to, and it depends on your experience. But typically, it's around entry-level cybersecurity we're talking about, a cybersecurity position. Entry level is about anywhere from sixty to 70000 that's, you know, across the board in the United States, it's around that amount. So, and I can, I can show you real quick, is cyber security, security entry level career salary is around, let's see. Yep. There. Okay. More like, okay. The zip recruiter. And let me show you guys what I'm seeing here. So there you go. There's the entry level. I, I was close. This is just in Colorado. Um, you got to go from each state to really see because each state has a different, you know, cost of living and stuff like that and and all that. So let me show you guys what I'm seeing here. There it is right there. Uh, that's that's just in Colorado. Man, this is not. See, this is why I want to switch this up. So that's just in Colorado. Um and um, it's going to be different from state to state. Colorado's where I'm at. So it's just going to depend. Man, I hate I hate how I can't switch the screen. So, yeah, there it is right there. Hope that answers your question. Let me go to here. Okay. Next question is. Let me ask some questions, answer some questions on YouTube here. Whoa, 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 YouTube. Um, do you need a master's? I already answered that one. Okay. Julian says, uh, st studying A+, plus, is there a good path um, to start with cybersecurity? Yes. So A+, plus, if you really don't know anything, you start from scratch. Um, a plus is really good. To, that was my first certification uh, when I started out. The next one would be Security Plus. You can do Network Plus too. You can go uh, typically CompTIA. They want you to go A plus, Network Plus, Security Plus. But Network Plus, you can probably skip it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, unless you really want to go deeper into networking in particular, and you're planning to like go deeper into like Cisco or something like. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I would go to Security Plus. I just let me just keep it, keep it hundred for you. Like, it's you should just go to Security Plus after A Plus. The next path you should do is Security. Plus. Reason why Security Plus is a very marketable. It's a super marketable. It's giving. It's telling you all the main stuff you really need to know. It's just like it's hard to beat it. It's really a good certification, especially if you got the A Plus. It's the A plus kind of preps you for Security Plus, so yes, yeah, Security Plus would be your next step. I would highly recommend that you do that. Somebody on, I got another question on TikTok. Somebody said, "Tips on cybersecurity going to school for IT." Tips for cybersecurity. So, tips for cybersecurity. If I was going to school, things that you should know is number one: if you're trying to get into cybersecurity, you don't necessarily have to have a degree. In cybersecurity. It's a, it's a misconception that a lot of people think I have to have a cybersecurity degree to get in the cybersecurity role. Not necessarily. What it will help you to do is get 
into like internships and in, in uh, maybe apprenticeships faster if you have a cybersecurity, if you're already working on it. But it doesn't it doesn't exclude you if you're taking an information technology certification. So you don't have to get a cybersecurity cert degree in order to get a cybersecurity job. OK, number one, another misconception is that you have to wait until you're done with school. So if you're going to school, what I would highly recommend, OK, this is coming from somebody who's been doing this for 20 years. I, I, I went to school. Um, I went the, the military route, all that stuff. And I'm just going to tell you, you don't have to wait. If you're a college student, you don't have to wait um, to put your, your, uh, your resume out. You don't have to wait to apply for jobs. You don't have to like you can start looking right now. As a matter of fact, one of the things you should do while you're in school is get as much experience as you can while you're in school. And the way you can get experience, I mean, if you're at a university, if you're in a school, you could volunteer your time. And what's powerful about volunteering your time at the school, if they don't have like a paid working student program, which some of them do look into that. But if they don't, you can volunteer your time to help them fix image systems or help them fix the wireless across the campus or help them whatever. Volunteer your time. Put that on your resume. Then you put that on your resume. Then you can get you can actually get your first job and say, hey, I've experienced experience is like the hardest thing to get. A lot of times people are asking me about certifications degrees, certifications, degrees, certifications. Experience is the most important thing. That's what you guys should be asking me. <laughs> you know, what I mean? like for real, like that's the most important thing is the experience. I'm not telling you not to get a degree, a degree, you know, degree is good. Um, I'm not telling you not to get a certification. I'm just telling you, you should get while you're in school, get a, get as much experience as you can. Volunteer your time at the school, man, do internships, do look for that work, student work program, like things like that. And start putting out your resume on LinkedIn, on Dice, on Monster. All right, let me see. What other questions do I have? Um, I'm desktop support. What would you, what would be a tip to get into, into security? <laughs> I'm I'm the desktop support. What would be a tip to get into security? Um, so this this is awesome. Okay, this is let me just tell you. All right. Um, so let me I just want to enlighten you real quick with this, with this right here. I might write a whole book about this because this is something everybody should know, especially if you're already on the help desk, you're trying to level up, you should really know this. I want to tell you that you're kind of already doing security. You're kind of already doing it. It's just a matter of putting it on your resume. Now, if you want to know how to word it on your resume, go check out my uh, convocourses.net. Ch check out the link in the description below and download my resume. It's a free resume. It's my personal resume that I've used to get tons of jobs. Um, I've, I've had uh, I've gotten uh, four or five different high paying jobs with that resume. Of course, I've updated over the years and tweaked some things and changed some stuff and, and I'm constantly changing it. But that is my resume. If you don't believe me, go to my LinkedIn page that you'll see the same stuff from my resume on my LinkedIn page. It's real. That's my real resume. <laughs> I recently got hired and it was from that resume. So check out my resume to get an idea of what kind of wording you need to put and what kind of keywords. Now, let me get to this right here. What you need to know is that you are already doing security. See these things right here? This this stuff right here, this is NIST. This is called the CIS um, V8. And why this is important? Well, it's not the CIS that's important itself. It's the security controls and the security best practices that they're talking about that are important. These things right here, what you're looking at are a breakdown of all the security features that if you've ever touched or handled or managed or done anything at all with these things right here, this is the stuff that should be on your resume because this stuff right here is what employers who are trying to get you hired into a cybersecurity position or a information security or a, a GRC or compliance position, they want to know that you've done these things right here. These are security best practices. You'll find this list, by the way, it's not a special, there's many different lists like this. There's NIST 800, there's IS, I, ISO 27001, there's PCI compliance, there's HIPAA, 
there, the, which is for the healthcare industry. There's all kinds of different aspects of uh, of different industries that are touching these same things. So you want to put this on your resume. Look at this audit logs. This is this is just turning on, making sure the event logs on the windows are on. Have you ever done that? You got to put that on your resume, and then you got to show the impact. Now, the reason why I gave people an example of my free resume, my resume for free, is because that resume right there, that resume is going to give you an idea of how you should word, how you should word it, because that's that's kind of seems to be the hard part, you know, of like how do you put that, how do you put that together, how do you what kind of wording do you use to to explain that you're using that you've done audit logs that you've configured audit logs on 15 different systems so you know so let i would like to show you guys a little bit of something like that but let me get through some of these questions i hope that answers your questions my what i want you to do is number one download my resume take my resume get look at the don't copy it word for word i mean obviously right <laughs> like don't <laughs> Don't take my resume and uh, and not change the word. Like make it, look at it and look at how I word the key words. Look at the keywords I have on there. Now, keywords are from my industry, which is you might not want to do what I do, which is compliance. But the point is you get the keywords, which you can get from LinkedIn or other people that are in your, in whatever industry you're trying to get in, get those keywords and then word it in such a way that explains how you have done those things. So that's that's how you do it. All right, let me see. Let me see here. Is IT a part of cybersecurity? I think I already answered that one. Um, nee Abby says, hey, Bruce, do you know anything about intelligence community? Not that I could talk about. Next question. What are your thoughts? I don't have no thoughts about the intelligence community. <laughs> I'm a system engineer working for a national office. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of this. <laughs> well, actually, let me see. Just wanted to hear your thoughts on overall career in in, from, in uh, intelligence community. Okay, so I can answer this one. Um, what he's talking about is there's in the government. Um, one of the branches of of the government is you know you got different branches. You've got um, you've got Department of Interior, you've got, you know, agriculture, you've got Department of Defense, which is, of course, the military and logistics and all that kind of stuff. And then you've got the intelligence in, uh, industry within the within the gov federal government. Intelligence is, you know, spies and CIA and NSA and all those three level letter agencies that they, they do what they do. They collect information. Um it, there's a huge amount of work for cybersecurity in uh, the intelligence community for us. There's so many jobs. It's, they're the I believe that industry is one of the biggest people, the biggest employers of mathematicians because of uh, all the encryption and things like that. If I'm not mistaken, there that's the biggest area that they you know it's the NSA and stuff. So cryptographers, crypto analysts. Um, you know, talking about the people who decode uh, cryptography and stuff, encode and decode uh, information. So those guys, it's a huge community. What do I have to say about it? I used to work in it when I was in the military. It, you know, in the military, you can be in doing intelligence. I did it for some time. Uh, it's it's brutal. I for me, it was brutal. I I personally, uh, I personally uh, didn't like it. <laughs> I personally didn't like it. Uh, it's 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 great for your career. I mean, they pay pretty good because of the clearances and stuff you have to have. It's it's I, I will say this. One of the really great things about the intelligence about IC is that you have way less competition. Like if you're a website developer versus somebody who's a cybersecurity person in in Intel, uh, you have way less competition than a web developer. Because a web developer is competing against planet Earth. They're competing against every brilliant Indian dude on planet Earth, all every single everyone. You know, but in the in the intelligence in industry, you're only competing number one against eligible people in the United States. That means US citizens. 
So only U.S. citizens can actually get those jobs. Unless I think there's contractors or something you could probably some other like language specialist. And even those guys, I think, have to be uh, U.S. citizens. So the it's much easier to get in there. Uh, it's, it's much less competition because what we're talking about, like when you're trying to get a cybersecurity job is comp you're competing. We we are competing against one another because if we're going after the same job, you know, obviously they're going to have two applicants. You know, where if you're in the intelligence community, they're going to have less applicants because not everybody is not everybody can apply for those jobs. Not everybody is eligible for those jobs. So that's what I'll say about that. They pay pretty good. And then it's once you get in, it's hard to get out of it because you they're paying you a lot. It's less competition and it's harder outside of it than than inside of it. So that, that's just been my experience with it. I, I personally am trying my hardest not to go back into it. Let me see. Let me let me answer some questions from the bottom. I know people are just popping in here. Um, and I, I appreciate people answering questions for me. Thank you. I, I have so many people on here. Um, anybody knows if he's still working in the field or not anymore? Is this a question to me? I'm in the field right now, so I can't. I can only do this stuff on the weekends. I, I I'm I'm working for a for an undisclosed company. So yeah, I don't I don't normally talk about my places I work, but um, yeah, I I am in the field right now. I'm right now. I'm doing information system security officer work, and. Uh, It's not fun. <laughs> it's not fun. Um, how stressful are jobs in security? That's a great question. That's a great segue into what I want to talk about. Um, it's it can be pretty stressful. Uh, one of the things that people don't talk about is how stressful cybersecurity jobs can be, and the reason why is because there's not enough. There's really not enough of us to do the work. I think, and I, I think that's. So what they'll do in the last three jobs I've been in is that they put a bunch of hats on you. Every job I go to, they'll say, OK, not only are you going to do these two clients, but you're going to do X, Y and Z. And we need them delivered in this amount of time. And this is the last three jobs I've had. They did this. And it's because we don't have enough people doing this work. Um, somebody said GRC is low stress for me. Yeah, I understand that. Um, that's. That's that's good. You know, I, I've been in low stress GRC jobs. So I think I had a part time job that was very low stress. And all I did was all I was doing was writing policies. And it was it was awesome. They paid me the most money I've ever made before per hour. And I just wrote their policies and then worked on their security controls. And that was it. And it was very low stress. One guy was in while we're doing it. One guy was in. uh where to go uh, Ireland and one, one guy was in India and we're just talking, you know, my coworkers were talking about how delivering this thing to the client and everything. It was great. I might go back to that, to be honest with you. But right now I'm an information system security officer. And uh, somebody said, what is GRC? Yes. Governance, risk and compliance. That's what that's what it is. And I, I'll explain in a second. But right now I'm doing information system security officer and it is it it is. It can be stressful. It's not as stressful as I've had before on a scale from one to 10, um, 10 being I want to quit tomorrow. I'm stressed the hell out and I'm seeing a therapist and five being a uh, happy Monday. You know, like it's oh, damn, it's Monday again. You know, I'm, I'm probably at a six. It's probably a six right now. Six. It, but it's higher. It's not that bad, but it's higher than I would like to be. Because they've got us doing all these different things. It pays good. It pays okay. You know, it's 100% remote. That's great. Uh, the team people are, are are always, you know, they're they're decent. It's just, you know, it's just like a lot of work. That's all it is. I'm, I'm on a very big system and there's just a lot of work coming at me. So I'm just trying to figure out like how I can get this stuff done. So that's the stressful part of it. Um, it can be stressful. It depends on the job. But like I said, I've had jobs where I wasn't 
stressed at all. And you can see videos where I'm traveling, going all over the place and I'm not stressed out. You know, I'm, I'm chilling. But then this job, I can't go anywhere because I'm working for the government. So I can't go to certain countries. I can't go here. Can't go there. You know, every job's not like what you saw in those videos, you know. So, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to do false advertisements to sell a product. I'm telling you the truth here. So uh, let me see. Somebody asked. Let me see if I can go back to GRC. Somebody said, what is GRC? Governance, risk and compliance. What the hell does that mean? Let me explain. OK, so there's many different comp components to it, and it's a very broad field. Um, governance is managing. How does the organization manage information technology? Do they have certain policies in place to govern the systems, to manage the infrastructure of the system? That's one part of governance. Risk is what level of risk? Every organization is going to have risk. Everybody walking on the face of the earth has some level of risk. There's no such thing as no risk. There's there's low risk, but there's not no risk. So you can walk down the street, hit, get hit by a, a random asteroid. What are the what are the chances of that happening? What's the probability? It's very low probability, but there is a risk that it could happen, right? So risk is is managing. How does the organization manage the risk that they on a in a way that they can tolerate. So that is what risk is. And how do you manage that? First of all, you got to know what you have. So it's running the scans, looking at the scans, doing assessments of the data that you find and making sure that certain controls are in place and fixed and things like that. That's risk management. And then compliance is making sure the organization fits within certain federal, local, even state and county laws. Something, a good example of this would be um, privacy. So every organization within the federal government is supposed to have a certain level of protection for personally identifiable information. So uh, that comes from things like a Privacy Act of 1974, and uh, there's some other privacy laws that are out there. But that organization, whether it be the DMV or whoever, have to be compliant with that particular law that was set you know, a while ago. So it's being in compliance or being uh, satisfying certain rules and regulations. Think of it like... When you're on the car, when you're in a car, you're on the road and you've got to compliance means stopping at a stop sign. Right. Like it means obeying the traffic laws. That's what compliance is all about. So that's governance, risk and compliance. The three of these together, there's a lot of overlap. So a lot of times governance bleeds into risk, bleeds into compliance. So there's it's it's a pretty broad field um, and, and it pays really well. Hope that answers your question. Can I get into cybersecurity without a degree? Um, you can, yes. There, it's a possibility. Um, if you, what you could do is just if right now you can, if you want to prove it, just go to, uh, you can go to LinkedIn and then just type in um, cybersecurity and then look for jobs and then sort by. They have a, a literally a filter that says no degree, and they have one that says no experience. You can literally find jobs right now for cybersecurity. They don't pay very much. Um, but you know, without a, without experience, you can get pretty high paying jobs without a degree, but they're going to expect something else. They're going to expect, uh, you know, your firstborn child, they're going to expect you to be born on a certain day of the month, but no, I'm, I'm joking, but you, <laughs> you can get a job without a degree and make a lot of good money, but they're going to usually expect you to have like a certification or something like a high level certification or certain level of experience. So it's possible. How long and where can I start? Go to LinkedIn. Here's your here's I'm going to give you three sources you can look up right now. Number 1, LinkedIn. Go to LinkedIn and do what I said. Go to type in cybersecurity and look for jobs. Uh number 2, go to dice.com. It's in the US, it's the top technical site that you can go to. dice.com and then type in same thing. Do a search. Type in cybersecurity. Entry level, cybersecurity entry level. You can even type in information technology. If you don't have no experience with information technology, don't do cybersecurity. Just type in IT or help desk or something like that. Um, the other place you can go to is monster.com. Those are the top three. But if you're serious, you want to go to the top 20. All right, let me answer some more questions here on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Uh, okay, I already answered that one. Hello, is GRCP certification good? 
for interviews? Do you mean the CGRC? Or do you mean the CGRC? That must be what you mean. Oh, let me let me look that up. I don't know if that's a typo or what. You said the GRCP certification. I don't know what that is. Oh, so there is a GR. Okay, my bad. I'm, I I apologize. <laughs> this is a certification. This is a real certification. Um, oh, somebody has asked me this before. Okay, somebody said hello. Is the GRCP certification or the uh, GRC professional certification? Is this good to let me get some interviews? I'm having a hard time getting help because most people, unfortunately, uh, want consultants consultation money from four hundred to twenty six hundred dollars. Consultation money. Oh, you mean like they you they will not talk to you unless. Well, you're in luck, my man, because I'm about to do it for free. I'm about to tell you some some dope ass advice. Um right now so here's what you can do if you want to follow along you just go to indeed.com first of all what we're going to do is we're going to look at we're going to look at um the marketability of this particular certification and now bear with me i'm trying to let people follow along with me on uh on tiktok i'm an old ass man so i'm trying to figure out how to use tiktok all right so here we go. Well, we're on uh, Indeed.com. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger like that. And we're going to type in, we're going to type in the GRCP. Is that what it was? Yeah, GRCP certification. Certification. We're going to look at the markability of this particular certification first, and I'll answer the rest of your question. Certification. I could spell. Yeah, so I'm not seeing nothing for that. Huh, nothing. So this is not a very marketable certification. It's looking for other things. Do you mean GRCP? Yes, I do mean GRCP. Nothing. Look at this. N nada. It might be because I'm actually searched on a certain place. So let's just put nothing so it looks for all throughout the United States. Okay, there's 20 jobs. There you go right there. That's the marketability of this particular certification it looks like. So there are people looking for this certification, but it's about 20 jobs at the time of this recording. So that's that's not that great. Um, let me show you a little bit better certification, a little bit better. So already we're at a disadvantage because this is a highly specialized field. Um, let's look for the G, uh, C G R C, which is a very recent certification. So we might not find, OK, there's 92 jobs at the time of this recording. That's not bad. So this is formally known as the CAP certification, by the way. So that might be why there's not as many. There's usually about 400 or a couple hundred here. So the, the certification formally known as CAP or ISC2, ISC2, CAP. And these are DRC certifications, 19 jobs. So this is a specialized field in the like risk management framework. Look at the amount of money it makes. Not bad, right? So this is a specialized field. And uh, think about this is that not a lot of people are looking for this work, but those that are looking for you um, will pay you and they will hire you at very quickly. That's what I found. This is something I've been doing for many, many years. This is really what this is my main my main money maker is has been this. I've done network engineering, I've done um cybersecurity consulting, cybersecurity analyst work. Uh I was a field tech at one point. I mean, I've done a lot of different things in this industry. But the thing that that's really taken care of my family, or when you see me in those videos and I'm going to Cebu, Philippines, or if I'm in Thailand or something. I did that with this job. I did that with as a as a GRC person, as a risk management framework. But that's it's paid for my life. So here's the thing: there's not a lot of people looking for this work or for us, right? 
there's more people looking for SOC analysts or for cybersecurity analysts or for whatever. Uh, for us, for compliance people, cybersecurity compliance, specifically NIST 800, which is what you seem to be talking about, not a lot of people looking for us. But when they do find you, they're going to they're gonna hire you as soon as they can. Here's the trick. You have to let them find you. They are looking for you, but you have to let them find you. And the way you do that, the way you do that is to buy my course. Buy my course, and then that's gonna that's gonna be the way that <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you real quick. Okay, so look, no, but seriously, I've got a course that'll walk you through this. Seriously, like you seriously, you could download my resume for free. It's gonna have the stuff that I've been using to get these jobs to get found, but I've got books that walks you through everything I'm about to tell you in, in five minutes, but it goes in greater detail and tells you all the nuances and all the cool stuff you need to do. Somebody asked me, what do you do? I'm a cybersecurity person. I'm, I do GRC, governance, risk and compliance. I go to companies, uh, organizations, governments, and I say, OK, here's the rules. Here's how we're going to follow these rules. Uh, let's run this scan. Let me look at the scan results. OK, we've got problems here, here and here. Let's see how we can fix it as a team. That's that's what I do. But let me let me just explain. Like I'm talking directly to. Uh, to Joe, right, right, right quick. So, Joe, your, your question was you're trying to get a job doing this stuff and you're trying to get interviews or maybe you have an interview set up. You need to get as many interviews as possible. You need to get as many opportunities as possible. But how do you get these guys to find you? Here's how you do it. Number one, number one, you got to get your resume right. Number one, like I said, I got my free resume. You could go take, you could check it out right now. Free resume. Download my, it's my personal resume. You can also look at me, check me out on LinkedIn and look at how I laid it all out. Number two, once you get your resume right, you've got keywords on your resume. You've got keywords related to GRC. Um, it's very targeted. Um, you've, You've looked at other people's resume to see how, what words, what, what are they using? How are they wording it? That's what you want to do. Okay, number one, let's say you got that done. Now what you want to do is take your resume and put it everywhere. You want to put it on LinkedIn, Monster, Dice at the very least, but you want to put it on top 20. If you got no job, you should your job should be to post that thing everywhere. Your job should be to post it everywhere. Where can I download your resume? Go to ConvoCourses.net, link in description, link in bio, link in profile up here, whatever. And then just go there. It says resume, free resume. Go there, download it. It's at the bottom of the page. And then you can take a look at it and look at the wording. That's what I want you to see. I Don't, don't copy the resume and be like, oh, here, here's all the jobs. I've been working for 20 years. My name is Bruce. Like change the – look at the words. <laughs> Take a minute, look at the words, how I wrote it, right? You might be able to do something better and do something better with it. Work that into your resume. Put those key words into your resume. I'm going to show you another dope, dope trick that you can use that I recently found um, if you stay on this live. But anyway, so number one, you got to fix your resume, number one. Number two, post your resume everywhere. I mean, everywhere, not just the top three that I said, not just Monster, Dyson, LinkedIn, everywhere, indeed, everywhere. Um, the next thing you need to do is apply for as many jobs as possible. And that's it. That's what you do. Now, if you buy my book about it, Cybersecurity Jobs, it's on Amazon. It's on, I uh, believe I put it on, um, it's on Google. It's not on Google yet. It's on Apple. It's on uh, Barnes and Noble. It's It's all over the place. You can buy the hard copy of it. You can buy the the paperback. You can buy the um. The, you can buy it on my site, and check that. It's gonna walk you through exactly exactly what I've been doing for all these years to remain employed even in recessions. I'm just trying to help people out. You know, the book's pretty cheap. Um, it's hopefully it'll help you out. You know, life is hard enough without having a damn job. Well, having a good job, I should say. But let me show you guys another trip for doing a resume. Um, let me see if I can, uh, see if I can actually do it on here before I, before I go, uh, mess around here. Let me see if this will work. Let's just log in real quick. See if this thing will work. Sometimes it does not. 
All right, here we go. If you wanted to get wording for a resume, if you were trying to get keywords or whatever, um, here's one of the ways you can do it. Oh, you can go to OpenAI, where I'm at right now, and you could type in, let's say you were looking for a GRC position. You can just type in, give me results, give me keywords for a GRC position. Oh, I've been using that tool too, ChatGPT. Yeah, ChatGPT is what I'm using right now. It's incredible. Um, you can also just take the actual job description. I'm going to show you that in a second. You can take the job description and put that in there. I just said GRC position. Uh, position. Give me keywords for a GRC position. Watch this. And I can tell you right now, these are not, this, this is not specific enough. So me as a cybersecurity person, um, these are not very good. So um, what you could do is do this. Now, I know that GRC has different types of GRC people. So what you want to do is go GRC NIST 800. Now it's telling me what that what this is. This is a great training tool, by the way. Um, let's go NIST. Give me NIST 800 keywords for a position. Is it position? I can't even freaking spell for a job. <laughs> All right. Cybersecurity framework. Okay, this is better. This is it. Yep, that's it right there. That's it. Nailed it. That's another thing you can do to find keywords. But the best thing to do, even better than GRC, I mean better than um than AI, is to look at other people's resume. It's much better. Because my my re my resume is proven. Um, it's better than AI. Incredible, I know, but it's it's been out there for years. So, you know, the best thing you can do is talk to people who actually have been doing this. But this gives you a great idea and a great understanding of what, what's in the field and stuff. It's it's really good to help you with writing. I would not rely on it to do all your work. Um, it, it's pretty silly because sometimes it comes up with nonsense. Uh, like, I'm looking at this list right now. Some of it's nonsense. There's one or two things on there that's not, like, relevant. So don't lean on it too heavily. Just use it. Use it to improve what you have. What search do what search do I need? What search do you need for cybersecurity? Are you entry level? Are you in cloud? I need more information. Are you an are you a firewall person? Are you a, are you a cybersecurity analyst? I need more information. I can actually tell you exactly what certifications to get. Okay, let me see what other questions we have here. How much is your course? My course has a huge dis discount that's hurting my soul right now. If you go to convocourses.net, link in description, link in the bio, whatever the hell this over here, this profile thing up here, <laughs> link up there. Uh, I've got discounts on there that you can take advantage of it right now. And also there's an entry level that's free that tells you like, is this even what you want? You might not even want this thing, right? So just go to the free one, log in there and, and check it out. Like you might get like a third away through and be like, nah, this is, I don't want this, you know? So there you go. Huge discounts for everybody. Um, let me see. You just got you just accepted me on on LinkedIn last night. Uh, can you roast my resume on LinkedIn? Um, you know what? I might have a I might set up like a service to like go through a person's um, profile. I might be able to do that for you, Joe. I might I, maybe I'll use you as a guinea pig. Send me Joe right now. Send me. I'm thinking about doing a service where I mess with people's resumes and people's um, 
profile on LinkedIn because I have not only can I use AI, but I can look at the results of what AI says and say, nah, this is not good. Or, yeah, this is this is excellent. So I'll use AI and I've got another service that I'm paying money for that I'm not using where it analyzes people's LinkedIn. Don't ask me why. I'm just doing all this extra stuff. Anyway, I can run it through these two different services I have and then I can myself look at it. But you, Joe, send me a message on LinkedIn and I'll use you as a guinea pig. You send me your stuff. I'll take a look at it. I'll run it through those two things. I'll look at it myself. And then um, if you like the service, like just tell me, let me know if this if it's helpful to you. Let's we'll just try it out. Like this is something I'm seriously thinking about doing and putting on a calendar so I can talk to people one on one and stuff like that. Um, LinkedIn, send me a message on LinkedIn. Uh, Professor Black Ops says um, NIST and RMF is great is a great life yeah it's it's actually really good i think it's been it's been good to me how much is your course check out the discount check out the discount combocourses.net link in description um thoughts on the oscp cert oscp is dope so if you guys didn't know oscp is um offensive security uh certification professional certified professional OSCP is a, it's a hacking certification. And the way that you get it is you actually have to hack some stuff. And it's offered by the guys who created Kali Linux. And uh, let me see if I can find the actual OSCP, SCP, Kali Linux site. These guys are incredible. I love their products. Like they're everything about everything they've done has been has been really great. And this is one of their certificates. This is one of their, let me show you guys what I'm looking at here. This is one of their uh, books, one of their courses. They got great, great, great stuff. Let me show you what I'm looking at here. If this is for people who are trying to go into the, the hacking branch of cybersecurity. It's a lot of hands-on stuff. It's very opposite to what I do. My stuff is not usually hands-on. I mean, there's some hands on stuff, but yeah, this is just one of the things that they have. They got all kinds of um, all kinds of stuff. Offensive, offensive security. Here it is right here. I think this is it. Offensive security. OK, I guess they changed their freaking URL and everything. Yeah, here it is right here. Not cheap. So for those who complain about how much money that I'm charging you, look at this. Take a look at this. Take a gander. Look, can you see this? Is this big enough for you? This is how much it usually costs to do the stuff I'm doing right here. <laughs> Cybersecurity is not cheap. Yeah. So before you complain about my prices, my low, low prices, uh, look. take a look at that. Take a gander at that. Build annually. Look at that. Yep. That's cybersecurity right there. Um, let me see here. I can't afford five hundred or thousand dollars search right now because I have until May 5th to find a position due to regional regions bank going 60 percent off layoffs and waves. Oh, my Lord. What is going on with the banks lately? Looks like we're going through another 2008. Damn. Yeah, don't don't spend money you don't have, man. Get a get a book and just start studying it. Start by reading. Okay, let me see. Do you recommend any study methods? Let me see. What is the interview like? Well, do you have any Oh my lord, so many questions. Do you have any good study methods? Um, do you do you have any good study methods? Okay. Um, study methods. For, okay. So number one, cybersecurity is a huge field. So there's, there's many different aspects of cybersecurity. It's not just hacking. Um, the stuff I was showing you on the screen, offensive security is, is, um, is called penetration testing, ethical hacking. Um, there's black hat hacking, white hat hacking, blue team stuff. 
red team stuff. All of it has to do with infiltrating a network, uh, finding and exploiting weaknesses on a system, on a computer, on a server, on a phone or whatever, on Wi-Fi, whatever. But there's different aspects of cybersecurity. Another one is what I do, which is compliance. Compliance and risk assessments is what I do mostly. My last job was mostly risk assessments. This job is compliance, where I'm looking at the laws, the rules. I'm an information system security officer. What I do is help organizations maintain a certain security posture. What that means, that's a fancy word for making sure that they stay at a certain level of security, a certain level of risk. A, an organization's risk is constantly is constantly moving because if they have a bunch of Windows systems, Windows will have like a zero day weakness. That means like no, nope, out of nowhere, nobody knows what happened, but something exploits that Windows, and then it, go, it just starts hitting places in Iran, it, in Israel, and all of the, all of a sudden systems are just going down. And then they find out, oh, damn, it's a virus. And the virus is exploiting a certain weakness, right? So or the organization has, let's say, 15 different window systems that have the same virus. And it's, they have their critical stuff on there. They have their critical information, their critical functions on the system. Now we've got to figure out, okay, when can we, can we remediate this? Can we fix this problem? So I'm in the process of helping, like, okay, what, first of all, what is the, does this affect us? Okay, what systems does it affect? All right, when can we fix this thing? The scan team has already scanned it. We we detected it on three out of the 15 systems. All right, now let's go and figure out if we can fix it. We found out if we try to fix it, it breaks several different functions that we have. So we can't fix it. What can we do? We got to put some documentation in place. We got to figure out how we can fix, we can uh, mitigate the risk. That means we can't fix it, but maybe there's something we can do to make sure that Nobody can actually exploit that particular weakness. So that's what I do. That's that's my main job. And it's continuous monitoring. I'm always looking at scans. I'm always looking at the network, always looking at making sure everything is good. That's that's kind of what and it's not just me. It's a whole team of people. Right. Like so that's that's kind of what the job that I do. And um, there's many different aspects of security. And it, it depends on what's what aspect you want to get into is going to be how you're going to how you're going to study and what materials I can point you to. If you're a cloud person, it's different. Like cloud is mostly is going to be infrastructure type stuff. You're going to have to set up instances of a cloud. I don't know if they call it instances. I don't know the names. I'm not a cloud guy. But <laughs> but there's certain things you have to know as a cloud security person, a network security person, a a, a, a hacking a person who hacks, a pen tester, uh, ethical hacker, uh, or a compliance person like myself. Like there's certain things that you need to know that I can send you in the right direction. Okay, let me see. I'll start with CSF. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, Sea Turtle. Uh, thank you for that, man. <laughs> Appreciate that. <laughs> Trying to learn this stuff. Yeah, CSF is a real good one. That's a uh, NIST. Cybersecurity, um, cybersecurity framework, and and I, that is a really great start because it ties into so many other uh, frameworks. Really, really great start. I'm actually going to write a book about that, and I'm going to break all of that that stuff down. Where do you start from? The I would start if, if I knew. Okay, let's say. I knew absolutely nothing. I knew absolutely nothing about about IT. Forget it, cybersecurity. If I knew nothing about IT, what would I do right now? Um, what I would do is start for free. Go to uh, go to YouTube. Don't TikTok's not a good place to to learn things unless you're. Unless you're talking to me and you're watching this live, then it's not a good place. <laughs> It's just got too much short form content. Now, it's it's really good to like get introduced to things, but not so much to like get deeper. Like if you want to get deeper, you got to watch like 30 minute, 40 minute, you know, two, three hour videos or worth of videos. Go to YouTube or go to Google, whatever, and then start looking at basic IT stuff. This might not be for you. This is not this this career field. I know it makes money. It's, it's secure. It's doing well during this environment. It's not for everybody. That being said, it's just not for every. It's just not. So 
see if this is even for you. Don't pay anything. Don't pay me nothing. Don't buy my course. Don't buy books. Don't buy anything yet. Like figure out if this is what you want first. That's what I would do if I was starting from scratch. Go to YouTube, type in information technology. That's it. How how to do information technology. How to, you know, something like that. Just basic stuff. Like what do you want to do? And then watch like one video. And if you get through a 30 minute video and you're like, damn, this, this sounds cool. Go a little bit deeper, right? Keep getting deeper and deeper until, until you realize that YouTube can only give you so much information. You'll get to that point. You can basically learn anything from YouTube, but there's a certain level you, of quality. You have to go a little bit deeper and then you have to start thinking about investing in yourself. The next step after YouTube will be a book. Um, buy you can you can buy a book for like fifteen bucks, uh, ten bucks, twenty bucks, and start going a little bit deeper. And I would recommend something like um, like a for dummies book. Like just start off start off s- small. Like if you really don't know anything, start off small. Read your first book, right? And then if you're like this is this is incredible. Start doing it at your house. Go to your computer and um, start messing around with your network. Start messing around with configuring your computer. Start messing around with that stuff. And now you have a lab, like your house, your wherever you are, your apartment, your your room, whatever. If you have a device, if you have a freaking phone, a phone's a computer. You can start doing stuff with your phone on your network. There's apps that you can actually download and start scanning your own network and start looking at stuff, doing labs with your phone, with your local network. So start off where you are. If you happen to be in a career path, if you have to be in a hospital, let's say you work in a hospital and you're trying to possibly change career fields. One of the things you can do is ask if they have any jobs. They, they might be able to allow you to shadow the IT person so you can learn at your job. You know, so there's different. That's what I would do if I was starting from scratch. If I, you know, if I was trying to get into this, start off for free. Just watch stuff for free. And then eventually you can start. Uh, doing books. Books are unnecessary coming from a guy who likes to read. Um, I disagree. And the reason why, Devin, I disagree with that is because everybody reads, everybody learns differently. So I read, but be- I learn better from books personally. If I want to really go deeper into something, I learn better from books. Videos are good for me if I'm taking notes. Like it has to be written down on paper. At, I don't know why, but I think it's because Everybody learns. Dip. There's visual learners, there's audio learners, and then there's um, tactile learners. People have to do um, whatever. I guess I could I should say it like this. Whatever your style of learning is, learn it that way. If you if your books aren't your thing. OK, don't do books. Just do videos. Right. Um, if if you know, if you if you learn better by audio, like you just listen to listen to books, audio books, like whatever way that you learn. Learn that way. But for me, the deepest way is books. And actually, I read all day long. I'm at my job. I have to read different manuals. I have to read um, different uh, uh, book long emails from people. They're explaining why we have to configure this or that system. Like there's reading is absolutely necessary in cybersecurity. Like you at some point, at some point, you can't just watch videos. At some point, videos aren't going to cut it. Like I could tell you, like whenever I'm at an organization and we have to figure out, okay, we, we have to get a new firewall, all right? We have to get a new firewall. We don't know which one to get. We know that the top ones on the market that are on our list of approved firewalls, <laughs> our list of approved firewalls that are in this manual that you have to read, um, are let's say Palo Alto and um, Cisco's firewall. I can't remember what it's called. So ASA, it's not ASA anymore, is it? I don't know. Cisco's firewall, whatever it's called now. And so we have these two that we can choose from. Now I got to go read their book on their site. They have a data sheet and I have to pull down the article in the data sheet and then read both of them. Like, okay, this one does this, this, and this. Now we need this other feature. We need this to be a five level layer firewall. Okay, how about this one? Does this oh this has this has the features we need? So you reading is absolutely fundamental. At some point, you can't just do videos. 
At some point, you can't just watch videos. At some point, you got to graduate from TikTok to YouTube to a book to actual vendor books and articles that are coming directly from Microsoft. At some point, that's where you're going to be. At some point, you're going to have to read the NIST 837. I can tell you that right now. If you if you're doing what I do, at some point, you're going to have to read the NIST 800. Like at some point, you're going to have to, and you're going to have to sit there and be like, "Oh my God, what does this even mean?" Read it 15 times to understand it. Like at some point, you're going to have to. Okay, let me see. I got some questions from Joe. Joe says, uh, "Thanks for the questions, Joe. I appreciate it." Trust me, this career is better than the mortgage industry, but I've been fixing and repairing computers since I was 15 years old. Just finally get a chance to get into college and pursue my dream. That's awesome, Joe. That's great, man. Congratulations. I want to get I want to get into cybersecurity and then after graduation, get into software engineering. So so I can do both sides and have that tech tech under my belt. So this is a long passion for me, but unfortunately, I'm running out of time to get myself a stable position so I can go focus on college and provide for my wife and I. So, Joe, just this, this is just a suggestion, Joe. But one of the things that maybe just consider this, let's just kind of brainstorm here. Um, one of the things you can do if you do have some level of. Um, skills with computers is just go for an entry level position. Now I know you mentioned that you're in the Washington Bell Bellevue area, and you said you need to make upwards of 85k. Now entry level typically is not going to get no 85k, but what you could do, one of the things you can do, if you're really passionate about this and it's something you really want to do, is get yourself an entry level position and start there. Now, it's not going to make 85, but it's going to get your foot in the door to get your experience that you can put on your resume. Another thing you can do is take two part-time jobs. Um, I don't know if this would work, but I'm just kind of spitballing. You could take two part-time positions working uh, in IT, one that's online and one that's local, or two online part-time jobs to try to get closer to 85. Um, 85. 85, correct me if I'm wrong, Sea Turtle and other people, 85 is a hard nut to crack if you're an entry-level person, depending on what country, state you're in. Um, it, it's just, that's hard. That's a hard one. I can't sit here and tell you that you're going to get 85 uh, with no experience. So um, you just need to get your foot. But the thing is, once you get your foot in the door, once you get about a few months of experience under your belt, and you keep putting your resume out there and you keep putting uh, you've got to promote yourself. You got to take put your resume like I know maybe you don't have a lot of experience or, or whatever doing this kind of stuff. But there's things that you could put on there to where they, you, they see that you're willing to learn and you want to get in there. And so somebody's going to be willing to take a chance on you and you be able to shadow a person who's doing this. You do that for about six, seven, eight months or something like that. And then the doors will start opening up once you start putting that experience on your resume. Um, that being said, it's it's not completely, it's not impossible that you would be not be able to get a a um, a part time, uh, a couple of part time remote, one hundred percent remote jobs and work those two jobs um, to get to closer to eighty five. Somebody asked me, could you, could I reach 200,000 in pay in cyber? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, I'm in a major, I'm majoring in computer information system, systems and commissioning as an officer in the army for cyber. Um, so you're, you're going to go through the army and you're, you're, so your goal is to get to 200,000 in cyber and you're majoring in information systems. And you're trying to get a commission as an officer in the army. Yeah. So what you could do if, if you're serious about this. So what you could do is as an officer in the army. Um, so the great thing about that is that they're going to teach you a lot of management type stuff. 
and the managers are the guys who make the 200,000. So you want to go for a master's degree. This is just one path that you could take. Like you, you could probably do a couple other things, but one path you could take is if you did go into the army, you worked on your certification, your, your degree, and then you went to, went to the army, you became an officer. Let's say a warrant, warrant officers are really sharp. I would, I would recommend that you become a warrant officer because warrant officers are very technical. They're very impressively technical and um, do a warrant officer job position. And um, when you get out of the military, if you want to get out, because sometimes they'll they'll convince you and stay in 20 years or whatever. So <laughs> um, what you you'll get out with a bunch of certifications, you get out with a, you'll have a master's degree. You'll have uh, they'll pay for you if you're trying to get a warrant. If you're trying to go into the military, they'll pay for your entire college there. You might have a pro there's programs where especially warrants, they'll pay for your entire degree in exchange for you staying in for X amount of years, like your entire degree, everything, every book, every class, every everything. But you owe them X amount of years. But when you get out, you got experience, you got certifications because they'll send you to free certification classes and warrants. They they get SANS courses, which are thousands of dollars. You can probably get a CISSP. You when you get out, you you be worth. You can you can pull two hundred easy with with that kind of um, well not easy but you can pull two hundred. <laughs> it's possible. Um, Bruce, appreciate your remote work course. Uh, been remote for three years now with your tactics. You know I pulled that course. Um, it was a little outdated, so I had to pull it. And somebody somebody pointed that out, said, hey, it's a little dated. So I pulled it <laughs> and then I added uh, I added it to my other course. I have a course where I um, where I talk about how to get in this field and stuff. So I added it with that one. But I'm thank you, man. I appreciate that. A couple other people reached out to me and said that I helped them out a lot. You know, that was the first time I I had just kind of started working remotely and I was on my like second job doing remote work. And uh, I was I was like blown away because then I was getting other offers for remote work. And at the time, it was hard before COVID. It was hard to get remote jobs. So I just put all that stuff on paper and then just put it into that course. And uh, it's there. I mean, it's still out there. It's just my emails gets flooded with remote job opportunities all day. Yep. Yep. It works, man. It absolutely works. <laughs> That's it's my best. It's my best. I was surprised nobody nobody really bought that course, you know. But it's my best stuff. Is that's really what I do? Like what I'm explaining now, I go in great detail and explain to everybody. Like here's how you do it. Uh, what's your view on on niching down early, like in Salesforce or ServiceNow? Um, in this market right now, Cyber Assured, I would. It's I think it's pretty a good idea because. A lot of times organizations are looking for a specific thing. And I say that having just went through like a few months ago, I've been at this job for I don't know, six months now, four months now. And I went through like five different interviews and everyone was asking me specific. They were asking me about specific um, vendors. Um, they were asking me about Jira. They're asking me about Agile which I think is a process. I don't think this. Um, and then they were asking me about uh, ServiceNow. And then they were asking me about um, Tenable and then some other products. Like several people, pe organizations were asking me about different products that they wanted me to like, hey, I, do you have experience with this? So I would say it's a, it's a, it would be a good feather to keep in your cap. Like if you knew one of those vendors, if that's all you knew, I, don't, I wouldn't say that was good. But if you got into one of them to where the point where you got a certification in it, like you got deep enough into it where you got a certain vendor level certifications, you know, I wouldn't rely too heavily on vendor certifications, but but it would be good to have, you know. So that's what I found anyway. I'm seeing many jobs that are primarily for enterprise assisting through their BA and, and QA. Okay, let me see. I got more questions here. More and more questions. Holy crap. Um, let me see here.
Joe, I went from software engineering to cybersecurity, purple team application security. Awesome. Man, he's got some real skilled people on here. Wait, do I know this person? You purple. Do, do we know each other, uh, Professor Black Ops? I feel like we know each other. Joe says, um, uh, once you see my resume and profile, you'll see I have experience with SOX and NIST 800 compliance. And just a year ago, using SOX 2, SOC 2, not my favorite, <laughs> but I've worked uh, for regions of Wells Fargo and Bank of America. Okay, Joe, yeah, like I said, um, send me your send me your contact information. And what I can do is I could take your resume, I could take your profile stuff, and I'll run it through some of the stuff I have, and I'll take a look at it myself, and then get back to you and see if we can like improve it. And you, I'll use you as a guinea pig to maybe I'll start this service. Like if I can, because so many people are asking me for one on ones, and I'm like, man, I don't have the time for that. But maybe if I could streamline my process well enough. I'll be able to do it like on Sundays or after work or something like that. But yeah, that's good, man. By the way, Sarbanes Oxley and uh, SOC 2, and you worked in an industry. Man, I'm, I feel like we can work with this. I feel like you got something, Joe. I feel like you, Joe, listen, man, you might have something. Because you know what you could probably do is you could do an IT job at a bank. Because if you have Sarbanes Oxley, Right. You got some computer skills. You know, they're not going to give you a senior level of position, I don't think. But who knows? I mean, hmm. Because a lot of times if you're in that and I've, I've noticed this, Joe, it's hard for me to get into another industry if I don't have experience in that. And there's a couple industries I that I have not been able to, like, really get into. Like when I was OK, so. And when I was interviewing, I interviewed for one that was a critical infrastructure, and they they had a they had some system that managed like dams or something. I don't remember what it was, it was like a, the electric grid or dams or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it was a, a critical infrastructure type type role where I'd be doing the security on it. And uh, it was the interview was going really well. They were like, "Oh wow, you know, you have this experience, you have that experience," and they said, "Okay, well." Have you ever worked in the critical infrastructure before? Have you ever worked for like a an electric company or whatever it was? I can't remember what it was. And I said, no, I haven't. But, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you guys. It would be a great experience. And they were like, pretty much the interview was over after I said that. <laughs> interview was, oh, I could see it in the guy's face. We were on a Zoom call and I could see it in his face. He was like, the interview was over after I said that. And then another time. Oh, man. Another one was a hospital. Same thing happened. Like we were talking and like, wow, you know, you have this experience, that experience, man. You, that's so that's so cool. Yeah, we might need that. And he said, well, do you have any experience in, in a hospital, you know, in a healthcare environment, whatever it was? I said, I, no, actually, I don't. And he was like, oh, you know, well, <laughs> interview was over, baby. Interview was over. I mean, don't get it twisted. I've, I've gotten in other industries before, but um, it's just I I've just found it. It's I think it's very good that you're in the banking industry in the in the financial sector, I should say. And you kind of know the lingo. You kind of know Sarbanes Oxley. So we might be able to work something into your resume and into your profile to where we make it beneficial that you've been a loan officer for all these years. And work that into something. We might be able to do something with that. So you might have something, man. You need to message me, man. Seriously. Let me see. Right now, I stay practicing labs and using NIST to perform compliance and tech systems and PCI compliance to do uh, firewall compliance, handy uh, handware. Okay. Yeah, that's cool, man. Uh, doing compliance and risk is what. What I do for the mortgage right now on the, the little auditing and uh, why? OK, man, I'm telling you, we might be able to do something with that. We might be able to do something. Get with me, man. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I hope this works. I'm going to really go for this. Let's do this, man. Let's do this. You got to contact me. What are your thoughts? Black Ops said 
what are your thoughts on cloud compliance? Um, I've been focusing on NIST, IRS, Pub, 1075, and, and AWS. Man, I feel like I know this person. Um, what are my thoughts on cloud compliance? Um, I really don't um, only know FedRAMP, uh, which is the federal government's implementation of cloud compliance. Um, I don't know it off the top of my head. I'd have to read it. And you said, I've been focusing on NIST and uh, IR, IRS Pub 1075 in AWS. Um, I don't have anything to say about it. <laughs> I don't have nothing to say. You could probably teach this, man. Maybe I should do an interview with you and you could tell me about it. For real. Um, Bruce, thanks for these streams. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, let me see. Khalil says, um, I just graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in cybersecurity engineering. I got a CCNP and I'm getting my security plus certificate. My friend who graduated did, uh, didn't get a job yet and I'm scared. This is so cute. <laughs> this is so cute. I don't. OK, you're scared you don't get a job. That's. <sighs> OK, I don't know, Khalil, I don't know if you're still following me. I don't know if you're still listening to this, but if you are, man. Uh, if you listen to what I'm about to tell you, I'm about to change your life. All right. If, let me see if I get this correct here. You said you have a bachelor's degree. In, in cybersecurity engineering. You have a CCNP. You have a CCNP. Is that correct? Oh my Lord Jesus! <laughs> are you? Are you? Is this a joke? Are you? Are you, are you joking with me right now? Okay. Oh man. Oh Lord. How do I approach this? There's so many different things I can do. Khalil, listen, listen to me. Right now, you can you can be making about six figures. I don't know where on planet Earth you live, but I promise you, if you just do, if you just get your resume together, you will not only have a job. But you'll have many, many offers. Um, how do I? I don't know how. You know what? Listen. Let me show you how you can get a good idea on how to make a get a six figure resume. Here's here's what I would do, Khalil. This is just for you. I'm not even gonna waste my time. Switching my camera over on, on TikTok. If you guys want to see this, you're going to have to go to YouTube or Facebook. Let me show you what I'm about to do. Okay. This is open. So first first step, go to openai.com. If you don't know where it is, just go to Google, type in chat space open GPT, and you'll find the site. This is an artificial intelligence. And this is just going to quickly give you a preliminary of what you should put on your resume. It's going to give you an idea of what to put on your resume. This is not so G, this this site. This is not a cure all for everything. OK, this it, the thing cranks out all kinds of BS. Sometimes it's it's not it's it's getting there and it's going to be there within about a year. But right now it's got a lot of problems. OK, so let me show you what you need to do. So watch this. Make a professional level cert. Professional level resume for Khalil J, who is a who uh, who is a let's say a cyber security uh, specialist. With a BS in computer 
Uh, what did you say? Computer cyber? No, cyber. You said cybersecurity. Cyber security. This is this is called prompt engineering. Engineering. Okay. And and a CCNP. He is working on a security plus. AT period. This needs to be a ATS style resume. Okay, now watch this. What you want to do is take this. Of course, this is just nonsense, right? This is nonsense. This is just, it's just giving you a sample of what your resume should look like. Now, you probably don't have the, the experience. Um, but what you want to do is fill in fill in your uh, all your technical skills this there's a couple things that are wrong with this i'm seeing but this is just going to give you an idea of what your resume should look like if you want more ideas take my resume it's link in description if you if you're on tick if you guys are on tiktok watch me i've got a free resume here go here and go to combocourses.net and it'll walk you through where you can you can download my free resume <clears throat> another thing you can do is if you're on youtube and you're watching me Link in description below. If you're on Facebook, link in description below. That's my free resume is there. Go to that site. What's the reason why I say get my resume is because it'll give you an idea of the keywords you need to put and the wording. How you word it is important. The keywords and then how you word it. You want to show what you did and then the impact to the organization. Now, let's say, Khalil, you don't have experience. That's probably your college student. You don't have experience. So you still have the benefits of being in college is this. Now you can apply for internships. And you, this is something you should do right now. Let me show you something else. Here's another thing you can do. I hope you're watching. This right here, this right here is going to change your life. I, I'm, I'm not, this is, uh, this is not hyperbole. I'm not exaggerating. I am telling you what I'm telling you right now is going to change your life. I wish I'd known this when I got out of school because this is exactly what I'm about to show you is what I would do. This is my profile on LinkedIn. This is my profile on LinkedIn right here. If you want to follow me, just go to LinkedIn, type in Bruce, uh, Bruce space CISSP RMF, and that's me. This is this is what it looks like. This is me right here. This you want to fill out your profile as much as possible. I cannot stress this enough. This is something that people will go and download my resume. I see you guys downloading all day long, but I don't see people doing what I'm about to show you. I just don't see that. This most people will not take this this extra step. Once you get your resume done, you're using it so you can update this. The resume is the resume is only it, it's like a placeholder. It's like notes. So you can upload it here. And what you want to do is fill this thing out completely. Even put a damn picture in here. See this picture? Put a random ass picture in here. Put your picture here. It doesn't matter. You, you can put a picture or not, but picture whatever, right? You can this one's kind of negligible. You don't have to, but the more you fill it out, the better. And then you want to put in uh, all your keywords here. You want to put that you have a CCNP. You want to put that you have a bachelor's degree in computer science, uh, computer engineering, uh, and cybersecurity engineering. You want to put, uh, fill out this whole thing. You want to also put in your about page. You want to explain uh, who you are in the about page. Put more keywords here. Look what I put in here. Look at all these keywords. Look at this. Remote work preferred. Remote work. Um, you want to put all your keywords in the about section. And then you want to fill out anything you've ever done. You got to fill it out completely. And the reason why this is important is because this is how you're going to tell people who you are. This is how people are going to find you. People will find you. You think people aren't looking for a person with a CCNP? A CCNP is a professional level 
sir. If that's what you mean, I mean, I maybe you meant CCNA. I don't know, but CCNP is not. Not everybody can has the brains to do a CCNP, my man. It's extremely difficult. It's very hard. I know because I took a CCNA, and that mother that mug was hard. <laughs> Uh, CCMP is hella hard. It's like four certifications. Am I right? Yeah. So even without your experience, you, you could, you will be able to land a job. You just got to make sure you put all that stuff in there. So I shouldn't be scared to not get a job. You think that cause I don't have the security clearance and I live in, and I live in D.C. This is you're blowing my mind right now. You are you are blowing my freaking you live in D.C. with a CCNP and you're worried about getting a job. Oh, my gosh. All right. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I OK, I get it. You, you you haven't been in this field. So why, you know, why would you suddenly know that? OK, listen. All right. So it is a common misconception that people have. And I the first time I heard it, I was like, what? I was confused. People think that to get a cybersecurity job, you have to have a clearance and you don't. They will they do a background check? Yes, they, they'll do. Typically, especially if you're in a high level organization, they're going to do some kind of a background check. But every job I had have, haven't had background checks. I haven't had to have to. I haven't had to have. A, a security clearance at every job I've had. There was a part-time job I worked at making the most money I've ever made per hour. I didn't do no background check on me. They, just, they saw my resume. I did an interview with them and they, they hired me the next day um, or in a couple days. And there's been a couple other ones that have been like that. But if you're in a high level organization, if you're working for the the DOD or NSA or C whatever, you know, what three level organization or whatever it is. And yeah, they're going to do a background check on you. And then the, what they'll do is they'll do what's called public trust. And it's not a public trust is not a security clearance. Um, it, it's thrown into the basket of security clearance, but it's not a security clearance. Well, security clearance requires that you are a U.S. citizen. You have to be eligible to take, which means you got to be a U.S. citizen to have a secret or top secret or whatever, X, Y, and Z, Yankee, Bravo, whatever, certification, whatever it is, right? So you have to be a U.S. citizen for those. But a public trust is not a security clearance, and you don't have to be a, if you don't have to be a a, um, a U.S. citizen for those. And not all jobs need a security clearance. Sometimes they'll do a background check, but that's not a security clearance. So. I'm trying to, exp you, you can be scared. It's, it's your, if it's your first position, your first job or whatever, then I can, I can understand your fear, but um, you are, I, I wish I could articulate how far you are. Let me show you. Let me see if I can give you a visual representation of how far you are. Maybe it'll make more sense. Um, if you if you follow everything I just told you, you'll be all right, man. In fact, you'll be better than all right. You'll you'll be on this thing. You'll you'll be contacting me, Bruce. You were right. That's amazing. Wow, I I have a job making a hundred billion dollars. Oh, man, you were right. Yeah, yeah, I was right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been doing this for quite some time, my friend. Yeah. So you 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 will make money doing this. You know, it, it won't be a hundred billion dollars, but it will be more than most Americans make, probably. So what you're looking at here is uh I wish I could make this screen bigger, but what you're looking at here is a security progression chart that's made by this brilliant man named PaulJeremy.com. I don't know who this guy is, but I use this site all the time, and it's incredible. I love this resource. This is not a government. This is somebody's personal site, and I love this thing. I love this guy. So let me show you where you're at. Okay, so this is a CISSP up here. See that? So as you go up this chart, by the way, let me just explain. Up the chart means higher and higher certifications. 
higher and higher certifications. The colors represent different aspects of of IT and cyber cybersecurity. Well, actually, IT because some of them are not security related. So the colors represent. So, for example, purple is security assessment train uh, testing, and then black is uh, security and risk management. So if it's going up, you're going from entry level all the way to expert level. And you are CCNP is over here in the green because these are network certifications. The green is over way, way, way over here. And a CCNP would be about here. So it's it's about middle right here. This is a professional level cert. So experts here, up here, up top, right up here. And then middle is professional level certs. All of this stuff in here is professional level. Intermediate down here. You are here. You are here. If if I'm I'm, if I'm not mistaken, you are here, right? So, yeah. So you you're not doing too bad. Uh, people are looking for you. Really, they're gonna want to know if you can do the work. Now, at this point, you have all you have every qualification you need. Now they just wanna gonna want to know that you can do the work and that, that that'll be about it. That will be about it. So I hope that this helped you. If you listen to nothing else that I've said, if you if you're watching me right now and you are really looking for a job here, if you have if you have listened to nothing else, if there's only one thing you could take away, I would say get your resume good. Upgrade your resume. Post your resume everywhere. All right. It doesn't matter how good your resume is if nobody sees it. It's kind of like McDonald's versus Lark Burger. Everybody knows what McDonald's is. But I bet you most people don't know what Lark Burger is. Lark Burger is a local burger shop here in Colorado that's incredible. And they've got maybe three of them in the state of Colorado. That burger is amazing. It's a it's an amazing burger, but you've never heard of it. Nobody knows about it because they don't have very good marketing. It's not advertised very well. It's only it's local. You know, so it doesn't matter how good your resume is, is, is if nobody knows about it. You got to get it out there. So once you write the resume, once you put the keywords in there, post it on every every place, post it everywhere everywhere and then aggressively look for positions now if you have no experience at all and you have not been to college you don't have a certification you got to go for entry level it help desk customer support that's where you got to start you got to apply for those kinds of jobs and they exist they're there um, they don't make a lot of money um but and they're probably going to be local. Most of them won't be work from home, but you got to start somewhere. Now, if you are a college graduate, you're coming out of college with a degree of some sort. You've got a little bit more options available to you because you can apply for those entry level positions, but you, you don't have to. So now what you want to do is look for internships, apprenticeships. See if somebody will take you on just based off of your CCMP. Go for it. You have nothing to lose. Put your resume out there, post it on LinkedIn, on Indeed, on Monster, on Dice. Put it everywhere, everywhere, because somebody's looking for you. You pre Be prepared to get a lot of people contacting you. Don't answer. You don't have to answer everything that they send to you. Some things won't apply to you. Some things will be kind of like shady. Like you'll be like, what is this? Delete it, right? So you got to vet everyone. You're, you're interviewing them just as much as they're interviewing you. Right. In the first email, like in the very first email, look, read what they're saying. If you don't like it next. I hope that helps. All right. I'm going to read a few more questions from TikTok and then I'm going to have to I'm out to bounce here. I'm currently a unified comms engineer making one hundred and ninety. I'm trying to get to two hundred and fifty. Mark, is there any tips? Um. I don't have any tips. You are beyond me. You should be teaching this. I I don't have any tips for you. <laughs> Go to somebody who makes a million. I, I can't. You make way more than me. Uh, Turtle or somebody else might be able to help you. Um, 
I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> but congrats, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, let me see. Somebody, oh, Turtle, Turtle's answering questions. Somebody asked Turtle, uh, so would an ethical hacker pen tester be more reactionary? And Turtle said, no, uh, that is more steady. Um, then he says, somebody said, I'm struggling with, I'm struggling with that too. Bruce has a good template. Okay, I'm I'm answering like, I'm reading like four different conversations at once here. Um, are there any resume builders, consultants that that I can help to tell your resume? Oh my lord, yeah, there's a really good one. There's one I just learned. I wanted to I wanted to show you guys, but I don't really. Oh man, I have to know a little bit more about it. There's an, let me see if I can find it real quick. It's really really good. It's it's mind blowing. Um, Uh, let me see if I can find it real quick and we can go through it together. Oh, I think this is it. I think this is it. Um, so here, let me show you guys what I so somebody asked me, are there any are there any resume builders, consultants um that I can build and tailor that can build and tailor your resume? Okay. There's a couple of re great resources that you can use, but they're paid. Now, if you want something free. Come to me. <laughs> I've got a free resume. You could just check out my resume, but you have to do it yourself. Like I'm, I'm thinking about doing a resume service where I look at your resume and I go through the stuff that I've, I'm actually paying for some of these services. So you can give it to me, and then I could run it through it, and then I could show you. Know, I could do that, you know. But I haven't set that up yet. Me and Joe are about to go through that together. But let me show you what I have here. Let me show you guys. Okay, so this is called resume.io. And um, I believe I did I thought this was free, but I guess not. We're gonna have a free trial here. And um I if I'm not mistaken, let me see, choose your template. Let's try this ATS style right here. And um let me let me set this up real quick and then we'll go through this. I don't want to show my account stuff. So let me. Man, TikTok, what in the freaking hell? They really need to do a thing where you can do the screen too. That would be really good. Because I hate switching back and forth. Okay, so there's I'm trying to let me see. Let me see if I can do this one real quick. Let me see if this is if this is a good if this is the one I was talking about. Before, yeah. Okay, you can log in with LinkedIn. I'm on resume.io. I'm trying to, I'm going to test it out real quick. Um, so I chose the resume that I wanted. I was looking for an AI, there's an AI resume builder, and I'm trying to find that one. I don't, this might not be what I'm looking for. This might not be the one. Hmm. Let me see if this, let me see. Resume AI. Man, it was really good. You basically put the job you want. You literally post the job you want, and then it'll tailor a resume for you. And uh, it's going to put a lot of people out of business. It's it's ridiculous. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to find it. This might be it right here. Resume.ai. There's one called network.ai and there's one called resume.ai. And I'm I don't know which one it is. Uh let me see here. This is what I'm looking at right here. And I think they're they're using write and edit lightning fast resume bullet points with cutting edge chat GPT. This might be it right here. So if you want to create a resume, <clears throat> you go here. Oh, man, you got to make an account and stuff. Maybe I'll do this next week. I don't know. I don't know. 
I haven't used this before, so I just don't. I'm not sure. Right. I don't. And, and keep in mind, guys, I'm not. This is not an endorsement. I, I don't know what this, these people do with your information. Like I it's the first time I'm seeing it. But I saw it. I saw a YouTuber using it and uh, I was it blew my mind. Like you you find a job, you take the job description, you put it in there. It writes a resume for it writes a resume for you based on that specific job. And then you just go through the resume. And you're done. Uh, let me see. I took your advice and posted your resume on the resume the other day. Put it on Dice and I already have nine views. Not much, but a good start. Okay, so you want to also, don't, Jay, you want to put it on just, not just Dice, but you want to put on Monster, Indeed, and LinkedIn, and you want to build out the entire profile. Upload the resume, ATS style resume, but also fill out the entire profile for those for those sites. And if you want to go super crazy, put it in the top ten sites for the U.S. The top ten job sites, and then you'll see some real results. Nine views is not a lot, but if you put it on all those sites. And you do what I'm telling you to do, you will see. You'll see. I don't even want to spoil it for you. But be warned, like you, you're really putting yourself out there. So what I do is I I don't use my real name. I don't use I use an alternate phone number. I use an alternate and all this stuff I teach in my course. Like all this is in my book. I tell you exactly, exactly to the letter what I do to get opportunities every day, even in, in a recession. I get I get these opportunities all day long, even in a recession, because there's people looking and that they know I'm here. And that's why I put those things in my newsletter because I can't, you know, you know, I can't do all these jobs. So um, Jay says, some of these recruiters are aggressive as heck. No attempt to schedule an interview or anything. They just keep calling and want to talk now. Yeah, man, it, it gets crazier than that. That's why I use a separate email. I use a separate or you can you can use your email, but you want to make it so that you can make a rule to where it goes into another, you know, another uh, folder or something like that. You can do that. But and you don't want I it's man, the most annoying thing is phone calls because they'll be calling me. They call me all day long. It's so crazy, man. That's why I have a whole nother phone. I have a whole nother phone and I send all the messages to that other phone because I can't. It's too much. And I, it's so bad. Sometimes I'm getting upset. Like, <laughs> I've got to calm down. Like, hello. You know, I'm just, I want to scream. Like, why are you calling me at 5 p.m.? You know, or whatever. But I'm like, how are you doing? <laughs> okay. What is a good cloud entry level role that pays well? And a person uh, coming from a different non-technical background will do well in. Um, I don't know. I can't. I don't know about a role, but what you could do is um, is AWS is what I would recommend. It's a good entry level cloud certification, and it's the it's the best. It's the I wouldn't say the best. It's the top marketed cloud certification. So I would say AWS uh, cloud. What is it called? AWS Cloud Practitioner. That's what it's called, ACP. AWS Cloud uh, Practitioner is the one I would recommend that you do. Start off with this certification. The role is going to depend on the organization. Once you get the certification, once you get this under your belt, then the role will come from the certification. And the why, reason why I can't just off the top of my head give you a role is because they can name the role whatever they want. They can call it whatever. But this, I could tell you right now, if you get this certification, um, and you're going to have to know some technical stuff. At some point, you have to crack a book and start learning how networking works, how, you know, what's the difference between a server and a, and a router or something. You know, you have to know that stuff. But this is your question was like, what's entry level certificate um, role? This this will give you that entry level role, the ACP or um, the AWS uh, certification 
a certified practitioner. Hope that helps. Uh, let me see. I got a couple more questions here. What would you say about Hack the Box? Um, Hack the Box is awesome. Another one is Try Hack Me. That's a good. They're very fun. It's it's like a game. It feels more like a video game. It's really fun to mess around with, and it's it starts you off at a low level of hacking, like very basic hacking, and then it gradually gets more and progressively harder and harder. And then if you're really serious, you can pay for. I think they have an entry level free thing, and then they have like a ten dollar a month one. They have these different tiers, but once you get to this higher level. You're paying for like a whole network. Like they'll have a whole network, and like you have the pin. You got to get in with using some code or something like that. Like using like t making your own software to get in. It gets that complicated. But hack the box is awesome. But also try hack me is awesome too. Uh, what is it called again? Um, I wonder if that's. Are you talking about the the hacking stuff? All right, guys, um, that is it. Um, I've been talking for about two hours. I appreciate all the questions. I apologize for the people who I could not answer, especially the dude making one, 190 asking me how he can go to two, 250. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. And somebody asked me, uh, what is the best consultant outside of Cold Fire in, in EY? I, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I can't think of any right now, uh, but I I know I've worked with a couple of them before. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much. I'm out of here. I appreciate everybody's questions, but I am I'm freaking exhausted. <laughs> and I gotta I gotta talk to you guys another time. Thanks a lot, YouTube. Appreciate you guys.